We have a new business partner, Tariq St. Patrick. Who can represent Stansfield properly? You're not the only one with secrets. How about we trade? We about to open shop. Try. I know you're selling out there to pay for Davis. Well, Tariq has got himself a full-fledged organization. Him and Brayden are Tommy and Ghost Part 2. And Monet and Lorenzo are the Lobos gang. This should be interesting. But he's still so entangled in that family that I'm wondering how this is going to end. They've got us tra the episode 4 trailer. We're going to slow it down, break it down, pick it apart for clues. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure, be sure to turn on notifications because we do more than power on this channel. We're thinking about doing the Chris Rock Fargo series. We've done Godfather Harlem. We do politics. We do stocks. We make you get them life gains on this channel. Be sure to follow me on Instagram. I communicate with a lot of you guys on Instagram. And me, Larry, and special guests go live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night, and we take your phone calls. Let's watch the rest of the trailer, and then we're going to pick it apart. You need to go get a gun to protect yourself. This case came back on you. I can control anybody, Tariq. When you know what someone wants, you give it to them or you take it away. Very first clip we see Monet walking into a room saying we've got a new business partner and his name is Tariq St. Patrick. No doubt she's telling this to the kids and I can't wait to see what their responses are. The only one who hasn't had somewhat of an intimate talk with Tariq is Drew. Um, he's had a talk with Kane. I think Kane is cool with him. And we know Diana wants to do other things with him, so I think he'll be, the family will be cool with Tariq getting into business. And now the next clip we see, oh, Professor put his penis in anything that works in his department or his school, Jabari, talking to Lauren and Reek. Basically saying he needs the finest to represent the university. Now, what could they be doing? Maybe they're going to be doing some kind of a, I don't, they don't do spelling bees in college. Maybe there's some kind of a event or some kind of um, some kind of a campus something that they have to battle another college, and he wants Lauren because she's really smart to come. And of course, Lauren's got the hots for Tariq. It's trying to get Tariq to come. Next clip, we see Lauren really, really close to Tariq. I'm talking Benica. You need a mint in your mouth, close, saying that she's got secrets. And Tariq says, well, hell, I got them too. Why don't we exchange secrets? Now, we know Tariq ain't going to tell her the ultimate secrets he's holding. But what secrets would he be willing to tell Lauren? And secondly, which one of these women is Tariq going to go forth with? Who is he going to have a relationship with? Who is he just going to keep around for business purposes? Who is he going to smash? We got to figure all that out. Then we see someone slamming money on the table um, I'm assuming that's Davis McClain slapping money and Tariq slapping money down on the table for Davis McClain. I guess we'll find out in this episode. We see Reed talking and then we see from there we see him talking to Brayden. Then they skip to a clip to this white dude who was in last week's trailer. I can't tell who he's talking to, but I'm assuming he might be part of the Brayden team helping Reek and them move that money. Next clip, we see Tasha on the phone with Tariq saying that she knows he's selling drugs. And I'm sure what they didn't show us in the trailer was she also might be trying to warn him that the Tejada family uh, basically is pulling strings with him through her because Tasha is his weakness. Or at least that's what we think Tasha is his weakness. And she's telling Reek as he's running, walking through the street, bruh, you need to get you a gun. And then they cut to Tariq getting a, a six-shooter. Man, what in the hell? I don't know no big-time male drug dealer with a damn six-shooter. Come on, Reek. I hope this gun ain't for Reek. It probably is. But have we ever seen Tariq shoot a gun other than the one that he used to shoot his daddy? Then we see Tariq opening up a door. And guess who's on the other side of that door? Drew. Like I said earlier in this review, Drew is one of the only people Tariq hasn't had an intimate conversation with and you send him the softest of the crew over there to get to know Tariq and a lot of y'all think Drew has, you know, knowledge. He's smart. He might be smart, but he's soft as uh, Charmin Cotton. 
Um, I don't think Drew is willing to bust a grape at a fruit fight, but I guess we'll see. Some people thought it was going to be Drew and Tariq teaming up to be the next Tommy and Ghost, but we'll see what happens. Then we see someone slamming a piece of paper on the desk next to um, some brandy, some, some liquor, and then they cut to Davis McClain fussing out short man Tate. <laughs> My guy Tate. I'm glad he's back. So we knew that this stuff with Tate wasn't going to be over with. Tate is running for governor. And he has his foot knee deep and what happened with Tasha, Ghost, and the whole entire scheme. And I knew it was going to be a matter of time before they drag him back in. I'm still wondering if they're going to try to drag Paz back in. But I guess we'll see. I'm interested to see how they weave in Tate's storyline into what's going on now because Davis McClain is turning over all the rocks. Then we see Tariq running through the streets. Um, this boy can't get nowhere on time, which sooner or later is going to catch up with him. Another clip of him running through the streets. I don't think this means anything other than to just highlight Tariq need to get his ass up earlier and get places on time. Next clip, we see Reek kissing Diana Tejada. Now, I don't know if this is going to be this episode because what I've seen from these trailer reviews, a lot of what they show may not happen in that episode. So he's going to supposed to get action from Lauren and Diana in the same episode? Huh. I guess we're going to find out. Then we got Monet looking at someone with that strange look. Is she looking at Tariq kissing Diana? I doubt it, but she could be. And if she is, you know on the inside she's seething. Now what I can't figure out is Monet hasn't put two and two together and realized that Diana and Tariq like each other. I honestly think it's more of Diana liking Tariq than it is Tariq liking Diana. And maybe this is going to give Monet the wrong thought process to thinking that, okay, I thought it was his mama that is his weakness, but it turns out it's my daughter. And that could lead to the daughter or Zeke dying. Because I don't think Tariq is really feeling Diana the way Diana is feeling him. But I guess we'll find out. Then we cut to them having another party. And do y'all see that chick in the corner right there in the left corner? She is scared as hell. That looks to be Braden beating up somebody in an American Eagle plaid shirt. And this can only be one of those parties where they're making all that money. It's just we're going to have to figure out why there was a brawl going on in this party. Then they cut to Reek, who's looking at someone contemplating. And they want you to think that he's talking to Monet, so who's saying that I know how to pull anybody's strings. You just figure out what they want, what they like. You give it to them or you take it away. And as they're saying that, they cut to Tasha in the backdrop of Lorenzo's homeboy who has some kind of a mechanical job working inside the prison. And then they pan in on Tasha St. Patrick. But we all know what they want us to think on that. They still want us to have the assumption that the hold the Tejadas are going to have over Reek is the well-being of Tasha in prison. And the hold that they want Tasha to believe they have over her is Tariq's well-being. They don't know the St. Patrick's, do they? <laughs> they don't know the DNA Tariq comes from. And they obviously are trying to put the ghost persona in Reek. So don't be surprised if three or four members of these Tejadas get killed by maybe not by the end of this season, but sometime in the next two or three seasons because Tariq is the new embodiment of Ghost and they've got to let that play out. So you guys leave me all your comments on what you think is going to happen this episode, something that I might have missed, something that you think is differently from what I said. Be sure to like the video. Comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Follow me on Instagram and check us out live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night as we talk power, we talk politics, we talk stocks, we talk current events, and we also bring on special guests to help make the show stay interesting. And until that next Sex Is Hell video, I'll see you.